Hi, top recruiter, readers, and viewers. This week, we've got a great webinar on LinkedIn company pages to give you the quick runaround around for 25 minutes on what you need to do to make sure your company page is on brand, best representing your organization, why it's important, and the key steps to take to make sure you're engaging your professional audience. Really hope you enjoy it. We're going to be discussing today how to pimp your LinkedIn company page. So if you're the person with responsibility or you'd like to be the person with responsibility for managing your company, whether you're a hiring organization directly or you're a provider to the industry, whether you're a recruitment agency or you're just an organization who want to brand the products on LinkedIn, we're going to talk about how to basically, uh, what best practice looks like or how to pimp your LinkedIn company page and get it right there and talk about some of the changes that have occurred in the last year, year and a half since we last covered this topic on our webinars. So if you're watching a, re, uh, 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 a copy of this on YouTube or elsewhere, you can still use that hashtag social talent with any of your questions, comments, or just good shout outs to say that you're enjoying this. So what are we gonna be covering? Well, first of all, um, if you're new to our webinars, most of you are repeat visitors. I'm Johnny Campbell. You can reach out to me on Twitter at Social Talent, and you can find more information about our company, Social Talent, at socialtalent.co. We develop a training platform that enables recruiters to be more efficient, to make more hires and do so faster. We call this the Black Belt and Internet Recruitment Online, and you can basically sign up for this today and become a sourcing ninja in a matter of weeks. And then stay up to, uh, up to date on all the best uh, recruiting techniques as well. So if you like the style of our webinars, you'll love our training platform. We'll give you a bit of a better indication of that in a few minutes. But today's topic, as I said, is LinkedIn, and it is the company pages segment within that. So we're gonna cover over the next few minutes why you should be interested in company pages, why it's important to get it right, how to get started, some of the basic things you need to have in place. Uh, talking about featured groups within that as well, and a pretty new concept uh, that was introduced a few months ago, showcase pages. We'll talk about how to segment your product pages and why that might be useful for you, how to target your updates, which is probably one of the most essential things you can learn to do, and some of the analytics that you can use and some of the changes in that analytics um, uh, feature within uh, company pages as well to use. And maybe if you're interested, why you might look at a premium career pages career page and how they differ from the normal pages. And then we'll close with some content engagement tips in terms of what works to get people commenting, liking, sharing the stuff you're posting out as a company as well. So first of all, why should you consider a company page? Well, if people follow your company page, which is like liking your Facebook page or uh, 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 following your Twitter page or plus one in your Google Plus page, um, followers on LinkedIn, according to LinkedIn's own data, because they have a lot of hiring data, uh, they are three times more likely to apply to your jobs. So if someone's following your company, they're signaling some sign of interest in your company, or at the very least, an awareness of your company, and probably an affinity towards that. So if you approach somebody who's already following your company, you're much more statistically likely to get that person to actually come work for you, because they do know who you are, they've chosen to follow you. That act of wanting to do that first is quite important. Getting more people to do that is confirmation that your larger employer branding efforts and awareness efforts are working. It also means that if you reach out one-on-one -on -one to somebody, they are 78% more likely to respond to your emails. That's nearly twice as likely to respond to the emails you're sending out. And it would work as well for emails or tweets or messages or phone calls, etc. Again, coming back to the fact that they've already chosen to show some sort of interest in your organization. Maybe it's because their friend works there, they used to work there, it doesn't really matter. But if they can follow you and you can track that, you can use that data to say people following our company are gonna respond better to our emails, they're gonna basically more likely to respond to our ads, they're the people we should definitely start with. They're also 10 times more likely to share the content that you're posting out there. Now, largely that's because people who don't follow your page don't know what content you're, you're posting. So it's not a great stat for LinkedIn to, show, uh, to throw out there. But it does mean that you can virally spread content. And if you're putting a lot of effort into Facebook and putting out content and not doing it on LinkedIn company pages, if you're hiring for more professional white or gray collar uh, individuals, you should be doing that on LinkedIn because they're more likely to share that content out there. And we'll talk about that at the end in terms of some content engagement tips. So the company pages have changed. Uh, LinkedIn aligned profile pages, company pages, groups to the same look and feel throughout 2013. So there has been some changes. And the thing is when you update your uh, company page, or uh, you first uh, set up your company page, a lot of people don't come back to it. And therefore it mightn't be fully optimized for the new LinkedIn. So let's have a look at some of those changes. So first off, if we look at a LinkedIn company page, we're gonna use our own page here as an example. Okay, there's several things to notice here on the page. Um, you'll see that there's a brand new image, it's called a hero image. It's a nice, big, wide, uh, widescreen image. We have, can you source like a boss? 
black belts can. And you can actually rotate several images so that as you're on this, it changes and changes and changes to different images. I mean, you can talk, segment that as well, which I'll talk about in a second. You've got, um, up here, you've got how you're connected. If you're not in this company, it shows people you know, which was there before, but also shows your careers. If you have uh, paid ads running for any jobs within LinkedIn, it'll pop them up here. And it will also show them any other sub pages or pages that this organization has because of course if you're a global operation you can have different country pages or regional pages all linking to a master parent page as well which LinkedIn can help you build and you'll see your top most recent updates there as well on your home page so a slightly different look and feel you get your total tot of how many people are following you by the way if you're not already following the social talent company page do so we post unique content there that you're probably missing from other sources so getting started, knowing that's the base kind of layer of how to build your company page, you gotta look at three different images that exist, okay? So the three images we have here, the first is the banner. That's that wide screen, and it's 646 by 220 pixels if your designer is picking this. Or you can upload an image and drag it and shape it, but it's best to build an actual image for that that has a call to action of some description in it. You have your standard logo, and then, which is 100 by 60, and you have a square logo, which is quite small, 50 by 50. So it's maybe your icon or image or whatever it might be. So how we've broken it up there, we've incorporated our main image, our, our branding in the banner, but we've put a, more of a call to action or a sales pitch in there. You might put in, we're hiring, or are you X, Y, Z? And that can be your kind of hero image on your page there as well. And then your standard logo and a square version of that. If it's a lot of text, like ours, which is, you know, social talents, they're, they're two short words, six and six letters, but that's even too long for a 55, 50 pixel uh, image. It'll be too low res. So just put the colors or icon that's associated with your company. That will work just fine. What is a good page like? Uh, well, LinkedIn uh, in December 2013 published the top 10 pages. Big caveat here, it's nominated by LinkedIn members, um, allegedly, um, for what's called engaging and inspiring content. So I don't know whether it's LinkedIn members voting. Uh, I think it is on some of them, or it's who's in the pipeline for LinkedIn to sell to. Some of them would say it's absolutely quality that they're voting for, and others you're wonder wondering why. But it's worth taking a look at these um, pages. So Adobe, which popped up last year as well, is a good one to look at. Uh, you've got uh, Apple One uh, as well, looking at Apple Employment Solutions. They've got a really nice page worth checking out. You've got Commonwealth Bank as well. You've got Dell, which have a really smart um, uh, presence on LinkedIn. That's definitely one to watch as a corporate. You've got HubSpot, who do fantastic things and chop and change their images regularly. You've got the Four Seasons Hotel Group, which have become quite good in terms of using their LinkedIn company pages. You've got Kellogg's who have great content up there as well and are engaging people in a very different way, professionals, which you might think is unusual, but they are a big hiring organization. And then you've got Marketplace, home mortgages, who have 400 odd followers. And I have no idea what the hell they're doing in this list, but you know, fair place to them. Maybe they know somebody on LinkedIn. Definitely one to, to, to look at just to wonder why. Um, and then we've got Mashable, which is the most followed page, uh, company page, down at number nine, strangely, um, which is, I think, more there because of their brand and people just want to get content. And NPR, uh, again, our good friend Lars here has uh, almost single-handedly got NPR into that top 10 list, uh, National Public Radio in the US, with a fantastic page, content strategy on lots of different accounts is really good. NPR are a great company to watch and, and, and get inspired from as well. So do check out some of those pages and those lists. Uh, they're worth worth having a look at. What you can do when you uh, set up your page these days, it's a pretty new feature in, in 2013, is you can feature groups. So we featured a couple of our groups, our weekly Wednesday webinar group and our sourcing ninja group where we only share private discussions with people who've been, who've been trained. Uh, you can add up to three groups in there. You do have to be a member of one of those groups, but it doesn't have to be your own group. If you're a member of somebody else's group, you can feature that if you think it's really worthwhile and interesting. I think you can find it from your company page, which is kind of cool as well. You can also add something called a showcase page, which was brought out, showcase page, which was brought out in autumn, I think, uh, that's fall for you Americans, uh, 2013, which is a new feature where you can basically add kind of showcases of products, not quite products because there's a product section, but anything you want. So for example, we have a subsection of our social talent page called Black Belts and Internet Recruitment. And if you look at that, we've built a page on LinkedIn all about our training, not our company. The company is about who we are as an organization with multiple products. This is one specific thing we have, which is our online training. And people can like that separate and follow that separately to our page, which is kind of good as well. And you can build a much wider ban banner. They've uh, 974 by 330 pixel banner for that. So you think about what you could showcase. You could showcase careers in a region, careers in a certain sector, like graduate careers, engineering careers, accounts and finance careers, IT careers, anything you want to showcase. That's why they chose that very generic term, showcase page. Something you just want to show off. 
So think about using that to showcase part of your hiring strategy, part of your organization, a region, a project you're involved in. It's really good to be able to engage people and keep them on the same platform. Whether it's Facebook or Twitter or anything else or Google+, people like to stay in the same platform they're in. If you do a lot of hiring and engaging on LinkedIn and searching, you should probably make sure your presence is pretty, pretty smart and up to date and you're leveraging things like showcase pages as well. On a break for two seconds, just want to give you a quick overview of our training platform for 60 seconds. I uh, hope this gives you a sense of what we do. I'll be back to you in two seconds. Are you wasting time trying to find more candidates on LinkedIn, sorting through thousands of irrelevant results, waiting on email replies that never come, trying to figure out why you should be using all of these social networks? In just 20 minutes a day, you too can become a sourcing ninja. Find four times more candidates for every job. Double the amount of great applicants applying for your jobs. Turn Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and more into passive candidate databases. Research potential hires in seconds, not hours. Know who's interested in your jobs before they even reply. Spend less time on the internet and more time talking to great people who are interested in your jobs. So what are you waiting for? By logging in for less than 20 minutes a day, you too can recruit like a sourcing ninja. You can have product pages which have been around for quite some time. Um, so if you're a direct corporate, you put your normal products. It's typical for a corporate, in terms of best practice, to have one page on LinkedIn and their careers is a subset of that. So you're probably going to have to share control of your company page with marketing in the marketing department and you'll have to put your products in there with a banner image or something else. If you're an agency, your products are services you provide to recruiters. So be inspired and uh, think about different things like the CV writing services, the interview prep services you provide, uh, contracting services, umbrella companies you might do for companies, placement. There's a whole lot of services you provide than just get you a job. You can put them in as products and you can put a separate image up for those guys, 646 by 222 if you're building them and we do recommend you customize each of these images as well. And you can put a big dirty call to action in there like apply for this job or whatever you want on it. And it's a click of a banner. So HubSpot do really good stuff, stuff in there, but they recommend, and we've done it on ours, is to add a separate bitly tracker to each image link. So if you've got a call to accent, click here to view our jobs, you can redirect them then to your website and the, the specific part of your career site from that. And if you use a bitly or tiny URL tracker, one of these tracking uh, tools that are free, you can then see on your tracking um, analysis software, who clicked that, is it working? If we swap the images, does it work better? We, have something else as a call to action. So again, smart analytical detail there. So add as many as you want there. You perfect, ample opportunity. It doesn't cost you a penny. None of these services so far will cost you any money on LinkedIn. So HP do this really well with their product pages. They've got 18 products and three and a half thousand recommendations. That's the great thing. You can't recommend a company, but you can recommend a product. So users on LinkedIn can recommend the product, which is a real endorsement. People um, you know, will look to others on the platform and see who they are, who's recommending this, and they will basically go with the crowd. Okay, So they will look to see what people are saying about you. It's really important to get that in there. Apple, even though they don't put a whole lot of effort into their LinkedIn page, have a quarter of a million, three quarters of a million followers, and they have a one product, but 184 recommendations for that product on LinkedIn. For those product pages, you don't have to just build one, you can segment them. So you can basically build audiences, is what it's called in LinkedIn, where you're designing a product, let's say CV, for example, perfect example here, uh, I make some of this stuff up as I go along, trust me. Um, CV writing services, you can have that as the product listed for somebody who's in, North, in, in Europe or Asia, but resume writing services if you're in North America, and you set them up by creating an audience, and then you have a different description of that product, uh, a different image that is showed to people who click on it, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. In fact, you can segment by geography, the industry they're in, seniority, function, company size. Technically speaking, I could say this is uh, our CV writing services for Europeans who are accountants who need a third job. And it, it's a segmented product page just for those. The more personalized, the better. Again, start with one or two product pages and then see how they're going in terms of getting click-throughs. And if, it's starting to get, if you're starting to get a click-through, think of segmenting more. And it obviously makes more sense in a bigger organization. So personalizing that banner image with different calls to actions is really good. But if you're segmenting by geography, mention, yeah, say, British 
or American or French people, if it's segmented to that country, in your uh, image, you're going to get more interaction because people feel it's quite personalized at that point. I think it's quite clever as well. Targeted updates are a no-brainer. This was a feature long needed within uh, company pages. It only came in uh, just over a year ago. It allows you to basically post on behalf of your company and target who gets that. So rather than just posting, at, say, a job to, uh, for an accountant to your entire follower network, you can segment that or target an audience by just the accounts or just the accounts and finance people. In fact, people who work for a certain size of a company in a certain industry in a certain company you have a certain profession. Literally those targeted demographics are available to you as long as there's more than 50 people in the catchment group and you can target each update. Which means that like if you're, tar if you're sharing jobs or specific career advice you can only make sure that people who, f who follow your page who are in, with the, in that segment, segmented audience actually see this content. So definitely, definitely play around with those targeting options down the bottom of that. Um, what do you want to post? Uh, this is, uh, I guess, the subject of lots of debate. LinkedIn most recently shared that the, action, the updates that get the most action, first of all, are company branding, stuff about who we are uh, in our organization. That kind of content gets great stuff there as well, that kind of company branding stuff. Uh, the employer branding comes in number two, career opportunities in that as well, the jobs you have, career structures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, third is tips and best practice, and then kind of fourth, fun facts. Uh, and kind of uh, stats and infographics, etc. That's statistically what gets the most interaction. So stuff about our company, its products, stuff about working for us in our organization, general tips and advice, and then fun facts. So we decided to see if we could mess with this ourselves. And we decided that rather than doing what everybody else did, and you might do the same and think about how to apply this for your organization, we took what we learned over the summer when we hired somebody new to manage our Facebook page. We got better interactions by doing what we've always said everyone else should do, but we hadn't practiced what we preached. We put more humorous content into our Facebook stuff. So we decided that people that work on LinkedIn probably want to break and want to see occasional funnies as well. We rehashed some of the funnies on Facebook and we've been posting some of those on LinkedIn. And we're getting hundreds if not thousands of pieces of engagement sometimes from those posts. Because everybody else does one of these four things here. We decided to add a fifth thing which was like images because LinkedIn brought the ability to upload images like JPEG or PNG files straight from your computer and put a tagline on it. And it's been fantastic for us in helping us grow our audience. So always look at these things and say, right, I could follow the one, two, three, four, or I could go for something some completely different. But experiment is, I guess, what I'm saying here. Experiment with different things perhaps that aren't on this list and see if you can, for your page, get a different audience, depending on if it's on brand, if it's consistent with your brand in a professional networking environment as well. You've got to try and make sure to cover that stuff. Near last but not least, your analytics, the numbers, the data, because all this activity and effort has to have a payoff and you need to be able to track it. So they've changed the analytic tools in your company page. You can get follower demographics in terms of what level of jobs are they in, who are following you, etc. The entry level managers, uh, literally what are they clicking on, on what days, what kind of engagement you're getting in each day. Each post granularly, how many people saw it in their feed, how many clicked on it, how many uh, commented, how many liked it, all that stuff. Um, and then people who've recently followed you, you can now view each specific follower. So when you look at your follower count, if you click on that number, and this works for other company pages as well, you can see the names of everybody who actually follows that company. You can go back in reverse chronological order from the most recent person who, follow, who followed them back in time and following those people. Which you may then consider as a recruiter in the team, connecting with people. Again, if LinkedIn are telling you they're more statistically going to apply for your jobs, see your jobs, reply to your emails, why not connect with them immediately after they followed your company? You're the recruiter in that organization, etc., etc. It makes sense to happen. You'll probably get a lot of acceptances. So look at those demographics and make sure that the audience following your company page is about right for who you're trying to market to, by age, region, function, if they're industry aligned with your recruiting efforts as well. So do that uh, on your own uh, pages. Lastly, um, careers. Careers is a premium option. Um, having that there it used to be on everyone's page, but they removed it unless you were paying for it. Uh, it adds a very rich media career page, a very pretty careers page, actually, to be honest with you. You can link video uh, uh, elements in there, display the jobs you have advertised. You can segment the audience so they get different types of career pages. So if you're getting a lot of traction on the free stuff and it's really paying off and you're seeing a lot of site visits to your company page, so again, going back to those analytics, then at that point, you should really consider a, a premium careers page. But if you're not putting all the effort into everything we've discussed first before you even get here, Having a premium careers page won't make your LinkedIn page successful. All the other stuff before now will. And a careers page paid one will give you a real boost if you're already doing everything right first. So decide what audience to do that uh, in, in which, sorry, what order to do this in um, first.
the work for us ads are really good and it drives people to this careers page as well whereby you can say for example I want to target every employee in, in this company and if anyone looks at their um, employee pages um, I have a work for us there so that, that when they're looking at their own profile pages they have this as well or you can target them by anything you want so the company that they're looking at the person who's doing the looking any demographics you want it's really effective if you have a LinkedIn recruiter account, you can then search within your followers, which is really good. Taking those, that data at the front end of our, our um, webinar this time around, where we said they're three times more likely to uh, respond to your ads, 78% more likely to respond to your emails. Why don't you start by just reaching out within your search, filter by who follows your company. It's available in a recruiter, one of the more interesting parts of the recruiter product. So if you have it, check it out. It's a great filter to add to start you all. So here's our checklist. Make sure that on your company page, you've created an impactful banner, you've featured your groups, you've been creative with the products, you've listed as many as possible, you've segmented product audiences where you can, you've put in a call to action and tracking URL on the product banner images, and you're putting out, really importantly, daily targeted updates and analyzing your follows. You know what, if you just do the last two, you'll be doing a lot of good stuff, right? Try and do it all, but the last two are probably the most important in there. If you want to learn more about how to do that and specifically what I mean in more detail in each of those steps, do check out our online training. We've got a whole section on employer branding around LinkedIn company pages and what to do. Uh, you can sign up for that today by going to socialtalent.co and checking out uh, forward slash training. So what have we got coming up next time on our webinar, which is on January 29th, if you're watching this live, or January 29th, 2014, if you're watching a recording of this. Uh, it's a 4 p.m. UK Ireland time. It's 11 a.m. on the East Coast United States or 8 a.m. on the West Coast. We put them up on uh, YouTube straight away if you missed them as well. So next week we're going to be covering what do we think is going to change in LinkedIn in 2014. So these are our predictions on the good and the bad changes, features that are going to get dropped from the dot-com product and added to the um, paid product and what features we can expect to come along for everyone as well. So where is LinkedIn going in 2014? Pure predictions, a uh, bit of fun. Hopefully you'll join us to see what's coming out there, but hopefully to make you aware of the possible risks of relying on a free .com strategy all the time, what to expect that you will lose based on what's been happening over particularly the last six months in LinkedIn, and they're turning off a lot of features for non-recruiter users, but also some great features they're rolling out, so we'll be discussing those again. So don't forget to register on the website, socialtalent.co, and check out any of our recorded webinars at youtube.com forward slash socialtalent.